Doing punches. Tonight we're going to have uh, part two of making a alternator motor, specifically a stepper motor. Uh, tonight I uh, plan to go over the most of the construction details and the exact parts and pieces that someone would need to recreate uh, this little experiment. First off, you're going to need a PC. Uh, I'm using Visual Basic. Obviously, some other programming language could be used. Uh, I've got a small little breadboard that's got one integrated circuit on it. It's got a, a couple of a few discrete components consisting of LEDs and resistors. I've got a cable uh, that goes back to the, the DB25 connector on the back of the PC, which is a printer port that's fanned out here. I've also got some power MOSFETs and this particular device uh, is, is uh, times three. The heat sink that's on it is uh, obviously not completely adequate but it served its purpose for my test. Also, I have an alternator. I bought, bought a uh, remanufactured alternator that fits off on a Chrysler. I specifically selected this alternator for two reasons. It was cheap and the fact that it didn't have a voltage regulator in it. As a matter of fact, if you look in these little square holes here, you can see the diodes that are actually... Um, three of these diodes are used to rectify the AC, three-phase AC, and convert that to battery plus. The other three diodes are in there for catch diodes to uh, absorb the energy, the neg negative EMF generated by the coils. <clears throat> in order to take this, you can see that I just soldered uh, wires directly onto these copper strips that uh, serve as conductors between these diodes. In order to take this unit apart, it was very simple. Basically, I just removed these two screws, which are field, uh, the field winding screws for the uh, rotor. And that was to get the brushes out of there so that I would not uh, damage uh, the rotor when I removed it. There's three more screws around the outside that actually hold the case together. And if you buy a remanufactured unit, it'll come apart with very little prying. The only thing that I added besides soldering these wires on here, internally I found the junction point of where the three stator coils uh, were all stamped together. They were basically crimped together. And I added another wire and soldered it on here. And it's this black wire that's actually running out of just a hole that uh, was on the back of the alternator. The other two pieces are the power supplies. This particular power supply is the main supply. And this is a fixed voltage. Uh, right now I'm using the 5 volt tap and I have 50 amps uh, available to me on this unit. I also have another bench supply over here which is adjustable. Uh, it has 3 amps available and I use it for the uh, to energize the field windings uh, on the rotor. So with that said, let's take a look at the actual two components that comprise the the circuit. The first is the, uh, <clears throat> the IC that's on my uh, breadboard. This is basically a hex non-inverting buffer. The main thing of importance here is that it's open collector. And uh, when I show you the drawing over here, you'll see where I had this open collector pulled up through a light emitting diode and a 1K resistor. The other circuit is the actual power MOSFET. You can see the circuit here that illustrates uh, the three legs, the drain, source, and gate. You can see here that the drain current is rated 110 amps and the drain to source voltage at 55 volts. So it's a high powered device definitely needs a good heat sink on it if it was to be uh, permanently installed in a continuously operating environment. 
The next thing we'll look at is the actual schematic, which is extremely simple. Starting with the printer port, I only depicted one of the data lines, but there's actually eight data lines available. I use D0, D1, and D2, which pins, pins 2, 3, and 4. Pin 18 is ground, which I use as common over on my 5 volt supply. I connected them together. Here's a 7407, a hex buffer. Again, with VCC and ground. Here's the two auxiliary gates that are actually used with these two lines showing their pinouts. You can see right here I have a 1K resistor. The VCC going through a light emitting diode here. So basically, the circuit goes drives to ground. And normally, is at ground until you actually pulse the gate high on this MOSFET device, which is an IRF 3205 in channel MOSFET. You can see how it is tied into the uh, one coil of the stator. Each one of these coils has a I left in there. I mean, again, I left all the diodes in there, but these are actually functional uh, still because uh, of the way I connected it up. But these diodes act like catch diodes and, again, suppress the, the EMF. The black wire that I added comes out and ties to 5 volts DC. So the next thing we'll do is one more time, I'm going to go ahead and turn the unit on just to give you a little demonstration of it running again. Not actually the best wiring job I've ever done in the world. I go back to the uh, Visual Basic screen. You can look and see right now that the unit is running, it's running at 70, uh, the interval is 70 milliseconds right now with 100% pulse width. You can tell the, the lights are pulsing pretty quickly here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and energize the field windings in the rotor. Then I'll go ahead and turn on see again it's got quite a bit of torque and of course as you increase current on the field windings it gets even more uh, more torquey so you can you can actually control that so that's it for for this session um, I will do one more part and I'm going to go over all the visual basic code explain exactly how the, uh, the little controller software program works